Beginners often think about notes in a piece of music certain ways, like the names of them, like this is a G, C, D. Or they might think of the sound of the notes, like ba na na na. But I want to show you how musicians often think about notes that helps them better understand what those notes are doing in an actual piece of music. Now, don't get me wrong, thinking about note names or how a note sounds is all good, but being able to think about notes on a slightly more technical level actually opens up this entire world of musical understanding. So do you remember those paint by number kits where each color was represented by a number on the canvas? Well, music can actually be pretty similar where each note in a piece of music is represented by a number. And once you understand how those numbers work, it's like you know the rules to the game of music. And the good news is that if you wanna learn how the numbers work, it's a pretty simple system. So I'll explain it in a second. But then I wanna show you a few different ways to use these numbers, and that is what will help you better understand the music that you play. So the numbers are called scale degrees because each number correlates with a note in the major scale in order. For example, here are the notes in a C major scale, and going up the scale, each note gets a number. So if you're playing in the key of C, and you play the note G, well, that's number five, and we call it the five. As for the notes not in the scale, well, they're just sharps and flats. Like, this G sharp would be called sharp five, and this G flat would be called flat five. All the other notes not in the scale could just be called a sharp or a flat. So, that's the numbers. But, as I said before, it's how you use these numbers which really helps you understand music. So, let me show you three different ways that I use these scale degree numbers. Now, the first way I like to use scale degree numbers is to understand chords. I have this mental database of every type of chord and the corresponding scale degree numbers that make up that chord. Now, I want to remind you that chords are pretty much just playing scales every other note. So, a three note chord would be the first, third, and fifth note of the scale. Or a four note chord, which is called a seventh chord, is the first, third, fifth, and seventh note of the scale. So the scale degree numbers are often in the chord names themselves. So when it comes to the notes in the scale, well, we have one, three, five, and seven, and then these other three notes that are in between, well, we just move them up an octave and it continues the every other note thing. So two, four, and six are called nine, 11, and 13. And then you just gotta understand what the different chord words mean, like minor means flat three or augmented means sharp five, or like a major seven is the seventh note of the major scale, and if it's just a seven, then it's a flat seven. Now, if you'd like, I actually made a little cheat sheet that has all the most common chord types and the corresponding scale degrees, and I'll put a link to it in the description below. The second way I like to use scale degrees is actually my favorite way, which is to label chord progressions. Each chord just gets a number for whatever note it is in the scale for whatever key you're in. Let me show you an example with a simple song like Happy Birthday. If you look, here is the chord progression. We really just have three chords. We have the C chord, which is the one chord, a G chord, which G is the fifth note of the scale, so that's the five chord, and then F, which is the four chord. So to remember Happy Birthday, I just remember one five five one one four one five one. It's like I memorized its phone number or something. Now learning to think of chords this way by the number allows you to understand the sound of each chord. You know, the uh, four chord and the five chord in the major key are both major chords, but they kind of sound different. So learning to recognize these chord numbers by sound, or by recognizing it, reading music, really helps you build this database. I guess I really like the word database in this video, but you build a database of chord progressions or common chord movements. And these patterns exist in all genres, classical, jazz, pop, blues, you name it. These are the rules to the game of music. Now the third way I like to use the scale degree numbers is to label melody notes. If it's a simple song, I'll just relate each melody note to the key, like happy birthday, 
556-517-556-521, and it helps me remember it in addition to knowing it by the sound or feel. But I would say if the song is more complicated, like a jazz standard, then I would relate each melody note to the chord. And you could do this in simple songs as well, like Back to Happy Birthday, we got the 556-51 to the three of the G chord. And then on the G chord, it's like one, one, two, one, five, back to the one of the C chord. Now there's another benefit to really thinking of music by numbers like this, which is it allows you to transpose music to another key much easier. If I was accompanying a singer and the singer was like, let's bring this down a key, well, since I know all the numbers, I can just, boom, play it pretty much instantly in the next key, thinking by number. So if you wanna be able to think about music in this way and have a deeper understanding of music, the first step is to learn the scale degrees in all 12 keys. Well, I've actually made another video that covers all 12 major scales in detail and how to play them so that you can learn the scale degrees. And if you wanna watch that and learn that, that video is right here.